All right. I am here with Paul. Um, how are you doing, Paul? Good, Brian. Thanks for having me. Cool. So uh, on this Red Belt podcast, I wanted to talk with Paul a little bit about uh, a subject that he's been uh, talking to some of his clients with. I've been working with Paul. Um, he's in a, a group that I've been in for a, a long time. We met through there. And um, and uh, so anyway, um, Paul has been focused on kind of like different things. There's a lot of different ways you can go about retention. And one way is like reminder and automation and things you can do like through Red Belt and stuff like that. But the other is just like making everything awesome. Right. Yes. And uh, that's one of my favorite ways because it's a very feel good sort of um, that's my favorite way to make more money is give more value because I feel really good about it. And I think there's some lasting things to that and then also leveraging that. So uh, tell me more. That wasn't just my idea. I just saw Paul was talking <laughs> about this anyway and wanted to bring him in. So it's yeah. Paul's idea. I like the idea. Tell us more about the idea, Paul. And it's just kind of funny too, because we get the stigma because like you and I are known as like traffic guys and trying to make stuff convert and leads and everybody wants more leads, more leads, more leads. But at the end of the day, it's like, you got to run a real business too and make it a place people want to be at. Like I know a lot of people in the industry who like, do good at certain things, but then it's like you, the product they're delivering is not that great. And you're kind of like, huh, this could really be a lot better. So for me, it's like, I've always tried to make my gym like a little bit different. Like I want to make it the most welcoming place on earth because people are scared to come train jujitsu. It's like, unless they're crazy like us and they're like, oh yeah, I read all your stuff. I want to come train. The average person is like, comes in like, I don't want to get beat up. You know, I don't want to get, you know, you know, yelled at and stuff like that. So you know, it's goes back to old saying that it's much cheaper to keep a student than to get a new one because getting new students is expensive. It's getting more and more expensive. You know, mm -hmm. Facebook used to be the wild west. We get leads for nothing. I mean, it's like just tons of leads for no money. Now it's like you got to work. And if you're not putting out content and educating people and then you're trying to run ads to people, it's and then people are like, oh, Facebook doesn't work. Well, it works, but you got to spend more money. You got to do all the other things you didn't have to do, you know, five, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, going back to retention you know, I tell my staff and everything is, you know, the most important thing is making the person feel welcome. So I'll give you like an example. Uh, one thing I've, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. This is my 21st year of having a gym. So obviously my beard's gray and I'm old now. I've known Brian, God's got to be eight years, nine years, almost a decade. It feels like it's getting there. Yeah. Yeah. It's very close to that. Yeah. Very close. You know, it's like, it, it's, we've been to a lot of business stuff, grappling stuff, all kinds of different stuff. And it's like, you see the industry, kind of change a little bit. And so one thing I did is, you know, it's something I've tested recently because I've always been like, you know, hire my staff, hire my people. And it was like, Amy actually was like, you should probably hire someone, try to hire someone outside of the gym. I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. And then finally I was like, you know what? I'm going to hire someone that doesn't train. And literally their only job, maybe, maybe they have a checklist of like cleaning and all this other stuff that I do. But the only job is to, I stole this from Lifetime Fitness where I work out because it's super bougie and super nice. But it's like, is her main job is to say hi and bye, have a great day to every single person that comes in or out of my gym. I don't, I don't care if they're a student, a prospect, a kid, whatever. It's like, it hurts. And she's funny because she's, she's a millennial, not a millennial, I don't know what they are now, but she's in high school. She's going to be a senior. Um, and she's like, oh, this part's really hard. And I'm like, okay, we got to work on your social skills, obviously. But it's been cool to see because people are kind of surprised because a lot of times I'll go into gyms and the people are working, like my gym was like this too. The people that are working, all they want to do is train and, and go talk to their buddies and stuff. So we've had this kind of cool switch because I do everything else like with instructor training, you know, doing all these things, but having a dedicated person who literally is just there to say hi and bye to everybody. You know, I've seen like, you know, it's not, I don't have a hard data for it, but we're having like, she's been there. It's like her second month. We're having like the best month we've had in a June and since pre pre 2020. And you know, the C word that we don't want to say, get your podcast, not good ranks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been wild. Um, it, it's been really cool because we do all the things, you know, it's like, you know, I walk, you know, we walk the gym, we try to make sure the gym's clean, make sure the gym's organized, make sure people, but, you know, having this extra layer, yeah, and it cost me, you know, it didn't really cost me that much. I think, I think payroll for her is like 800 bucks a month. She only does like the two, two and a half or sorry, two main hours. Um, Cause I don't care. Like the advanced MMA guys, they can, whatever, they don't care. So she leaves when that class starts. So it's like, bye, get out of here. Um, but taking care of the prospects and new people. And then also too, and if you're a smaller gym owner, this probably happens to you a lot though. And this happened to me back in the day and probably bark at the same way or Brian, I should say. Of Brian. Um, everybody knows, but um, you know, you're, you're, you have a front desk, but no one's at it. Cause you're all training. Somebody comes in for an intro and it's like, 
you look at the clock, there's three minutes left. You're like, oh man, I'm in a good round. Who's going to go talk to this person? And it's always been me like nine times out of 10 because my staff doesn't stop. They don't stop training. They're like, oh, I'll get them after the round. I'm like, Jesus. So it's like, cause you know, if it's a prospect, they're nervous. You want to make that experience really good. So it's one of the things we've been testing out. And I know it sounds so simple, but man, it's been making a huge difference. And in the environment too, it's like, it's like when I go to Lifetime, you know, it's like, if it's, if someone doesn't greet you, you're kind of like, oh, this person, what's going on? What happened here? This is strange. This is not normal. They're usually so nice. They're like Chick-fil-A, you know, look at the, look outside of our industry. Look at the businesses that are just crushing it. Like Chick-fil-A is like the most polite people on earth, Lifetime Fitness, the cleanest gyms, nicest people. Hi, have a great day. Every time you leave, you can take so many things from other industries and plug it into ours. Cause Amy, and I actually talked about this the other day. And once your gym's established, it's really, really freaking easy to run your gym. Unless, you know, something bad happens like 2020 and then throws a curveball that lasts like three, four years. But you take that thing out. It's like, once your gym's set up, you've got your classes, you've got a good schedule you've got good instructors. Hopefully you're teaching good classes. You're doing your marketing. You're not being lazy. You're posting on all the socials. You're creating ads, you're creating content. You're emailing your list. Like Barnes Cat said, you're using automations, you know, I'm a huge fan of leverage. Like I, I need to take myself out of as many low dollar tasks I can to keep my bandwidth sane so I can do the bigger things that I need to do. So automations are huge for that. So if you're not using automations, use those, but also throw in the personal touch. So I'll give you guys another one we're doing. And when I say the girl just greets people, that's for a business, like when we have stuff going on. When stuff's not going on, she has a checklist she goes through. And then in between classes and appointments, she was like, well, I don't have a lot to do. And I'm like, we, auto, we, we text and email all of our leads nonstop through automation, never stops. It just runs. You need to be doing that. But there's something about that human touch. So what we do is I took and I had my um, assistant pull every lead that we've gotten in the last three years, put it into a Google doc. So it's not even in the CRM, nothing. It's just in a Google doc. And she had her, so I have the girl back to three years ago. The oldest lead that I have, I mean, I have leads that are super old, but I think, okay, we'll test this for like the last three years. Go back to the oldest lead I have and call and text them. And they're like, well, if they're not interested, I'm like, cool, mark them red, take them off the list. I'm still going to leave them in the CRM though, unless they say like, never email me and go to hell. I hate you. And then it's like, you know, but a lot of times it's like I moved, whatever, but it's so funny. We've gotten appointments and intro scheduled because we just started this last week, going back with this manual one of going that far back. And I'm already getting appointments scheduled from three-year-old leads, you know, because automation does well too, but throw the personal, the personal touch on it too a little bit. It makes a huge difference. It's easy. You know, these kids, my God, she, she'll get through, I think, you know, and not a very long amount of time. I told her my goal was like, oh, I'll do 30. Cause I'm thinking that's about all I could do before I lose my mind. You know, and she's doing like 50 to 60 a day. And I'm like, this is insane. This is, this is a great return on return on investment for me. Cause I have her, you know, make sure the gym looks good. She's a girl. Because we're jujitsu dudes. You walk into a gym, usually it smells and there's socks on the floor and freaking rat scars in the corner. So, you know, she walks the gym when she gets there. And I told her, make it look like as nice as you can because you're a girl and we're guys. You know, and if something smells funny, you know, make sure we got air freshener, all these things like that. And have her doing that stuff. But yeah, it's like just elevating the customer experience is huge because there's so much competition now, especially with my area. I mean, I can literally hit another gym with, you know, a a golf ball for a good drive. <laughs> it's like, it's comical. There's so many, my, you know, bark has been up here in the DFW area. It's literally comical how many gyms are. And it's cool because the sport's growing and everything, but you know, you have to keep elevating your product to the next level. Yeah. And um, I, I do think most places are going that direction. DFW's busy. So it's, it's ahead of most. It's not like New York and LA yet. Yeah. It's, it's creeping up there. It's um, but I, I, I kind of missed a step. So I want to go back. I usually yeah. have people introduce themselves a little bit. So could you oh, tell yeah. us a little bit about your background? Cause I think it ties into your progression and what we're talking about anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have, I have the goofiest story. I, I tell people they're like, how'd you, you know, oh, you've been in MMA your whole life. Like I was not even into MMA. I was literally, I played golf in college. People are like, what? Yeah. You know, I was a nerdy golfer, non-lifting and, when you when you're playing college sports, you have to go to study hall three hours a week because to keep your eligibility. Because apparently college kids flunk out and lose their scholarships and stuff like that. So you know, I'm in there with a bunch of football players and wrestlers and all these people and basketball players. I just buy my own business, do my homework, and then I kept seeing this one guy. And then I saw him in my in my dorm room, and I guess he had a girlfriend off campus time. He was always walking around. He was was 
you know, he's in pretty good shape, always hanging out. And he's like, we started talking it's like that. Oh, you should come lift with me. And I'm like, dude, I play golf. It's like, well, we're going to lift for us. Oh, I'd make you know, golf better. We kind of hit it off. And he's like, all right, let's do that. And I helped him with some study and stuff. And then we kind of became really good friends. And he's like, man, have you heard of UFC? And I'm like, no, what is it? He's like, oh, it's this no whole barred fighting stuff. You, you know, we're, we're going to watch it. Blah, blah, blah. You should come watch it. Start watching it. And then he was like, he was wrestling at the time and he fell in love with MMA and we called it jujitsu back then, but we didn't know what the hell it was. And he's like, Hey, let's try this stuff. And we'd all go to this uh, fitness place, had like this little, like look, little cheap rollout mats. And like, he'd just wrestle us to death, you know, then we call it jujitsu. And then he started like, he had met a guy that was there working for the government. The guy based up was also with bounce back and forth from Dallas. And he's like, Oh, you should come down to Dallas and train at uh, Machado's gym. And I was like, Oh, okay. He, you know, yeah, I'll do that. So he came down there. And then he was like, man, fast forward a few years, you go by and I'd stop training because I kept getting like banged up. And I'm like, bro, I can't do this. I have golf season. And I know it sounds silly to say, but it's like I have golf season. And, and so I, we still were friends and worked out together all, thing, all through college and everything. And then I was getting ready to graduate. And he was like, man, I think I'm going to move either to Texas, LA or New York, but I can't afford LA and New York. So I'm going to go to Texas and move. And he should, you should come with me. I'm like, no, nah, you know, I'm just going to graduate and get a job up here and, and do whatever. What and location like, were you in at that time? What's that? What location were you in at this time? South Dakota. Okay. <laughs> Beautifully sunny, exciting place. No, I couldn't get out. So I was like, man, I, I got to get out of here. I got to do something. So I ended up moving down here with him. And the, the funny story is, it was like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to go to Dallas. I'm going to train and I'm going to get in the UFC and, 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 you know, be a champion, yada, yada. You fast forward, the, it was Travis Luter at the time. So it was like, he actually did most of those things, which was, it was crazy. So we moved so down So your here. friend was Travis Luter? Yeah. 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 So I know who that is. For yeah, the viewers, yeah, yeah. he actually yeah. did very well. Yeah, yeah, he did very well. From and he came, you know, talking a late start, coming from the middle of nowhere, having moved to another city to train, got crazy good at jujitsu and MMA, and then did really well. Fought in UFC, fought Rich Franklin, Anderson Silva, Pele in London. So it was cool. So I moved down here, and then he was doing his thing. And I was just working. Then I was like, I was kind of done with golf because it's like eh, I'm not gonna this shit's expensive when it's on your own and the school's not paying for it anymore. And it's like, I'm not going to turn pro. I'm not good. I mean, I'm good, but I'm not, I knew I couldn't make it pro level. So I'm like, I'll just give this jujitsu thing a try. You know, and then ups and downs wanted to quit most of the times. It was so freaking hard. Cause back in the day, it wasn't, there weren't beginner classes. There wasn't fundamentals. It was like, Hey, um, how many times can you tap in five minutes? Is my life story for the first year, you know? And then you fast forward, like, guys in the room was crazy it was travis was in there anthony prosh another uh ufc fighter from australia was there buddy clinton king of the cage champion um all these like who's who's of you know mixed martial arts and jiu-jitsu so i got to train with those guys it was brutal though. i say the reason that i made it as long as i have in jiu-jitsu is because i just learned to survive the first couple of years so i was just getting killed so fast forward through there and travis is doing really good and i'm I got, I finally got a really good job. I'm a stockbroker. I'm married now, got two kids. Life's great. But I was kind of like, man, I kind of hit my limit of like where I could go in the company. You know, at this point, I'm probably 26, maybe something like that. And I was like, man, I'm just kind of losing my zest for life. It's like, I'm getting fat. I'm not training as much as I can because I'm working all this time so I can get a promotions and all this stuff. And then Travis like, oh, you should quit and open a gym. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen, bro. And then talked to my wife about it and she was super supportive, which is kind of funny because a lot of times in jiu-jitsu women get a knock that they're not supportive about it and they don't want their man to train and they want them to quit and all these guys and these guys quit for their woman and then she divorces them anyways. <laughs> so it's like, if she's not supportive of jiu-jitsu, be careful. So my wife was super supportive about my training and then actually she's the one that's like, man, you, she could tell I was unhappy. You know, I was, we were making good money and everything. She's like, well, couldn't you just open a gym for a year and try it? And I'm like, I guess I'd keep my job and do it on the side. So I'm like, yeah, but no, I'm not gonna be able to find a place, you know, that's gonna be able to do that. And then she calls me one day at work. She's like, Hey, I found this place. It's right across the street from 24-hour fitness. And they said they'll do a one-year lease with a four-year option. And I'm like, huh, one-year lease? I'm like, that's tempting. You know, I tell people now never do this. Just go freaking uh rent space from a CrossFit place or something that has time. Don't go do what I did. I went and got a full-blown lease, no students. And I was like, oh, I can float it with my income. Then I didn't realize how expensive it can be to try to open a gym with no students. You know, if you got 30 to 50 students that you picked up while you're training at, um, you know, a rented space from somewhere, then it's a lot easier. But for me, it was a struggle because I'm working full time, trying to pay the bills, trying to teach classes, do all that. That all goes down. It actually works. I'm like, hey, I'm actually good at this. I really freaking enjoy this. And then like, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to renew the lease. I'm just going to do it part time though. You know, I'll get it making money and then there'll be an extra, extra income. And about that time, 
is when Travis got the Ultimate Fighter, and I'm like, oh, this is really freaking cool. It's on the Ultimate Fighter. This is great. Good for him. Yada yada. And then he got done, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna be fighting Andrew. Yeah, you know, fight Anderson for the title, and then I gotta do this, this, and this. And he's like, man, it'd be really cool if you could quit your job, and then you could run your gym, and then help me, you know, do all this stuff. And I was like, oh man, this is scary as hell. It's like I got two kids, a wife. Do I do this? Do I not do this? I'm like, all right, let's do it. And my wife was super cool again. I'm like, hey, she's like, I said, hey, I got this plan. I said, the backup is I'm going to leave on really good terms with my employer. You know, I put up good numbers. I've been a good employee. I'm going to leave on really good terms. My license doesn't expire for two years. So I've got two years to make this work. And if I can't get us to where we were financially before this, then I'll just go back and do this part time. And then took, you know, it was funny when you go all in like that, dude, the business is what it exploded. It was like, we got so busy. We were doing so good. And it was like, I started going to marketing events you know, do as much as I could to learn there. And it's so funny, but it's like taking these risks will all have changed my life so much. So I was going to these marketing events and they did, this is back before they had like jujitsu ones and some of the ones you've probably heard of the bigger ones. So I'd go to this fitness business summit uh, out in California, which was all personal trainers and fitness gym owners. But I was like, man, I got, I'm like marketing's marketing. It's like, if it works for them, it'll work for me. And I kept seeing this guy from the UFC there too. And it's just me and him and a bunch of freaking jacked up gym bros. And we're like, so we'd hang out and eat and talk and stuff and hit it off again, you know, like just networking and talking. And then, um, that was Alan Belcher. So it was kind of crazy. It's like just random thing. And then one day he's like, say, Hey, you know, we, we bounce things back and forth. This is back when, you know, we were doing all that crazy, um, click funnel stuff when, um, Alan was doing all the, uh, like Ben Askren's launch, Alan's launch, all these different, we we're doing all these crazy launches and he'd have these contests and it would be like, Hey, I'm doing this one. Whoever gets the most leads, you know, wins this prize, this prize, this prize. And every time he'd do a launch, I'd be like, if I didn't win, I'd be like in the top three. He's like, he's like, you're always like right up. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, man, I'm going to this. This is back when you could really manipulate Facebook. Like, I'm going to this group here. I'm using this page and I'm sending people here. And then I'm giving this. And like, when he started talking, he's like, man, that's really cool. And so we, him and I would jump on the phone and talk traffic and nerdy stuff like that back in the day when you could basically give like anything on Facebook. And then later on, he's like, Hey, I'm going to start a mastermind. You know, and I, I want you to, you know, be like one of the people part of it. And I was like, all right, that's cool. And then the third guy, or it was supposed to be him and another guy. And the other guy had to drop out because of some, something to do with like leases and something that he had in another business uh, that was in the same industry. But yeah, it was in, a, a, I know who you're talking about. We yeah. Have to name him, but he had a, a, a do not complete from another group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, so what's weird is I remember this order a little bit differently because <laughs> I ranked on those launches too. And that happened. I think there was some before that, but the um, some of those launches were after that because I participated. Yeah, yeah no, there were more. Alan kept doing them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alan, Alan, Alan loved that. He was he was deep into that game for a while. Now he's back into punching people in the face and doing really well at that. <laughs> But yeah, it was fun. We used to have a lot of fun back then. And if you know anything about Brian and ClickFunnels, he's a ninja. Um, but it's, yeah, and it was wild. So I met Alan, he did that, that got going. And then he's like, hey, you know, I, I want you to do more. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's let's relaunch the company. Because I think, it, I forget what it was. Originally, it was like Combat Con and stuff like that. And then we came up, he did Combat Business Success, got that going. And then him and I got, we got to a point because it worked out really good. If you ever read the book Rocket Fuel and you have a business partner, it's huge because he was a visionary and I was an ex uh, execution, uh, what do you call it? Visionary and integrator, not executor. God, <laughs> I was the executor. No, I was the integrator. So he was a, Alan had crazy ideas. I would implement on it, take action. So we weren't working on the same thing all the time, which helped us grow. And then we hit kind of a wall. We're like, we're like, we don't know what the hell we're doing. You know, and then we're getting, we getting all these clients and stuff and we're helping people, but it's like, we need more organization. And then Amy Majors was in our group and doing some stuff and she helped us on a project and now and i were like that was crazy like she's really good at this this is nuts you know it's and then ended up she ended up working for us and then ended up becoming a partner and then really took us to the adding the third person just took us just to another level i mean it was insane at the peak before the c word you know we were it was unbelievable you know because one you know in our industry there's a lot of empty promises and unfulfilled things where we were like what we did is we tell people hey we're going to do this and we would do it we'd show them how but you also know how people, if they don't do what they're supposed to do, they're not going to get any results. Like, oh, this doesn't work. It's like, you didn't go to any of the meetings. You didn't, you didn't even get on the Zooms. It's like, you didn't even open the portal. You didn't go to the trainings. It's like, we have everything. It's tried and true. Like anybody, and you've, Brian, seen people, Brian's a, a success story. I feel, if you get a plan from somebody that's done something and you follow it, you're going to get to their level or higher. 
you know, hopefully higher. You know, I love that we have clients like Chris Conley, his gym's way more successful than mine. I love it, but it's a different model that I don't want to have, you know, but he, he's the, he is the mega gym and it's super badass. It's like, but and he still stays a client, even though he makes insane amounts of money and super successful. And he was on a pri- our previous podcast. He's just a great guy. Yeah. He but was on, he was on here recently. Yeah. He's great. You know, and he's just like, man, I need to know, I need to be in the network for this, this, and this. And I'm like, cool. Well, we, we got you. We'll help you with this. And it's just being a part of a network makes a huge difference because we can't, as gym owners, we can't talk to our students about financial problems. They, are, they all think we're stupid rich and all we do is train and cash checks. It's like, bro, you don't see the 19 other things I got to get done today before I train in cash checks, yeah. you know? So it, it, having a sounding board. So we have our meetings, we have a weekly call and then we quarterly meet up and talk to each other and, and build, you know, have someone to vent to of like, Hey, this is going on. Let's put my work on here. Let's change this. So yeah. So it's been like, so that was, and then Alan during, after the, the C word, the 2020 thing, he's like, man, I, it's, it's, I'm just kind of burned out on this and I want to go fight again. I want to make one more run. It was like, Oh, all right, this is cool. So, you know, we worked a, a agreement out there and everything. And, you know, we joke around cause he's, we're helping him with some stuff he's working on. And it's like, Oh, well, I'll be back to, you know, once he retires, I'm sure we'll all be back together working on something again. Cause we just had a really good chemistry between the three of us. Um, but right now, Amy and I run combat and we've got coaches, got Johnny and Amanda. They're also super successful gym owners that coach clients. And it's just a lot of fun. Like I joke around sometimes. It's like, I love going to like the meetings and stuff like that because I leave with notes of stuff to do with my gym. It's like, Amy fixes my gym. You know, I have a problem. I call Amy. I'm like, Hey, this isn't working. What am I doing wrong? And she's like, well, step away from it and look at it. Cause I had a chance recently to expand again. Cause I was like, man, maybe I should expand again and just really go this, this issue. Okay. Well, how much is that going to cost? Okay. Yada, yada, yada. How much more time is going to take? She's like, do you really want to put that much more time and effort in the gym or you want to keep it running like it is now and you're happy and you can travel and do all things you want to do? I was like, okay, good. Thank you for being a sounding board. You saved me. He's like, I didn't want to sign up like another five-year lease on another spot. You know, so having people you can talk to has been great. So yeah, that's kind of my story. I went from being a college golfer to a jujitsu guy, MMA guy, gym owner, uh, Masters two black belt world champion. Um, yeah, I've done a little bit of everything. So it's like, <laughs> so going back to the early piece of that, yeah. Is uh, so one I like all the guests that give a little bit of the story, but the other is like, man, I really want to talk about it because so I um, I'm sure you left off some of the the hard hard pieces you had. I uh, I ended up uh, starting training at like a white belt karate gym that had an MMA program and I got my humorous bone broken in an M- Americana by oh. the head coach uh, Jesus. the first month yeah. of training and I still came back and right and so um, obviously <laughs> those sort of experiences we want to try to save our customers from yes but yes. one thing I've been thinking about like you said like there were no beginner classes whatever I've been thinking about a lot recently the way it always used to be and the way I taught so I taught before I opened I had my uh, 10th year anniversary of 10th at Beaumont recently. Prior to that, I taught at uh, a free club at Lamar University for a number of years. And people came in all the time. And what I was thinking back to is like, you know, we were really tight. We had a nice culture there. Not that we don't now, but like it was a special tight culture there. Um, It was kind of small, but it was tight. And also the... um, the kind of self-defense kind of like special quality of the jujitsu that people got from defanging the new guy every day. So you got (laughs) something from your, um, from that. Like, I think it, not so much for the new people did it add very much, but for the existing people, I felt like, okay, that more recently that I have a longer and longer beginner program and that we do like psych control drills and things like we taper people in. And what we see is the vast majority of the time, the defaying process never has to happen because they're more comfortable and whatever. And yes, they got to get used to jujitsu, but people don't ever really encounter the sort of spazzy, frightening white belt. I mean, at Lamar, <laughs> there was several times somebody Dude. tried to start punching me in the face. during. Oh, the- man. It happened more than once. Like, we ended up, like, racing challenge-ish yeah. all the time. And, uh, and it's like people were ready for that. 
And it was yeah. like you hear about old school jujitsu. And at that time, I was a white and blue belt most of the time. Towards the end, I was purple. Very last second. Most of the time I was a white and blue belt, kind yeah. of a seasoned white and blue belt, but still. And like, and also ranged from 115 to 130 pounds. Yeah. And the other people weren't, right? So the people yeah. doing this weren't. And so it, it was rough. And like, I really enjoy the fact now that the gym is more chill because that's removed. But I've been thinking like, is there... What are your feelings about that? Like, is there something missing? Is there a way to put that back and not <laughs> without know. the without the negatives, right? Can yeah. we put the positives back without the negatives? Man, you know, it's funny. Brian's right. You go back to those days. It was wild west back then because guys, I mean, it happens so rare now, but guys would literally come in to challenge. Like, happened I've all seen, the time at Lamar. All oh, I couldn't imagine being at a college. That'd be just insane. Like ours was, it was so funny. Cause like Travis, I grew up with him. He would just, man, just murk people. It was like, Oh my God. And they're like, he, but they didn't sign up. I'm like, well, yeah. Cause you killed them. They almost died. Yes. <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I remember those days and it's like, it was no joke. Like you were like, literally you got self-defense training in jiu-jitsu cause you get a spazzy big white belt and they're literally, you're getting, you get elbowed in the face on accident. Literally, you know, it's like, it's just violent. And so that part is missing. Right. I feel like some, I do feel and like you would do it all the time. Yeah. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Bruised up, banged up. And you're like, this is hard because they don't know what they were doing. You know, it's not their fault. They're just being aggressive. But I think we have with the beginner classes made it where it's a lot safer and open people, but we've also taken away that part. So one thing I'm, I do at my gym now, which is kind of a weird thing because I've always been a super traditional guy. I mean, I did MMA and I've coached MMA and I've had guys with UFC and now James Vick uh, runs an MMA program out of my gym you know, and he runs that, I run everything else, but it has a younger element in there. So it's kind of like people, it's kind of crazy because, you know, MMA guys trying to get him in the gi is like, if you're listening, it's like pulling teeth. It literally, it's, it's an argument I'm so done having 10 years ago. And James and I were talking about that and we are like, he's like, well, I want to have this MMA program. You know, I'm not a big fan of the gi. I'm like, dude, you don't have to be a big fan of the gi. You fought in the UFC for how many times? You submitted how many people in the UFC? It's like, people know you can do jujitsu. It's like, and so what we, we've done at my gym, it's kind of wild, is uh, in my main training nights, we have gi and nogi at the same time. So one mat's gi, one mat's nogi. I'm teaching the gi class. James is teaching nogi. And then what I do is it started off kind of like they did their own thing, we did their own thing. And then, you know, then to be like, hey, so-and-so's got to fight. You have a couple guys that could come over here and roll with them a little bit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. So now it's to the point now where we just, it's just a mixed class. If you're seeing me post videos, you'll see like, a dude it's like the old days a dude in the gi rolling with the dude no gi and, and nobody cares if i tell the guys the older guys in the gi i'm like hey these, and they're all younger because they're younger want to be mma fighters they're so much i say want, want to be successful fighters they're actual fighters but i'm like i'm like hey none of you guys have to roll with any of these kids because it's, it's 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 a challenge it's like you know you don't want to get up you know but it's been fun because i'll do i'll do my gi rounds whatever and then i'll grab all the younger guys and do a, a no gi round but i'd love to punk them i'll wear my gi the whole time and i'll you know i try to like barn cat knows I'll take my lapels and I'll try to choke people. It's, you know, I don't care if you're wearing no gi, I'm going to use it. My gi is a weapon. <laughs> right. But you've also rolled with me and you know, yeah. I'm one of the most chill people that you've rolled with. Yeah. No, you're fun as hell roll. Unless you're really going to be ridiculous, then yeah. I might decide. But like, if you're being chill, we're but like, so not all no gi guys are spazzes, right? No, no, I meant MMA guys. Maybe refresh, maybe refresh that. No, no, I'm talking about MMA guys. No, if there's oh, a no yeah, well, especially new guys you have me thinking about maybe if i have a a, a day where we bring bring in a, some rounds into the muay thai program because there i go. Thai program in my, because those guys don't roll it's like we could if, oh. I, if i'm missing the if i'm missing the spazziness if i'm like having yeah. nostalgia it's like huh yeah. it's like the picture the meme the with world. wolverine on the little picture and for me it's like the spazziness <laughs> inside it it's like yeah. that could be how to get it back yeah, because go back to what you said there, because when I, when I said like the, the, the newer Nogi guys are just, you know, younger wrestling type spazzy. But when they when the guys are actually get good at Nogi, then they're fun as hell to roll with. You know, I'll roll, you know, we'll roll Nogi, Gi, whatever. They're fun when guys have technique. But when they don't have technique and they're just young and athletic. Yeah, you get some of those old school memories come back where you're like, shit, I got to, you know, like, I'll give you an example. Like my son's training now. He, he's training. To, he's fighting uh, under James in my gym. So he's training to fight. And he's like, he's freaking I don't, I don't know if you met my son or not. You might have. I don't know once, but he's 21, crazy athletic, was did jiu-jitsu his whole life, wrestled. Now he's working stand up. But like, and it's especially because it's me, like he does not want to lose to me, which you know, he's going to lose to me, but he wants to beat me so bad. Like, but it's like, you know, when you're rolling, sometimes you sweep somebody and 
older guys just kind of accept it like, oh, okay. And they establish a position. No, man, him and his friends, I'll sweep them. Dude, they plant their foot. They bridge hard. They come at you. Like they don't accept anything. It's like, it's, you know, cause it's, it's like a tournament match almost. They got them. I'm way better than them. But it's like, at the same time, I'm like, I got to do shit right. Cause you know, it's like these kids, they're so athletic and it's so cool to see. So it's fun to do that sometimes. Cause I'll roll with the younger guys and I'm like, wow, if I had your athleticism, cause I was not athletic and I sucked. It's like these kids, they, they you sweep them, they bridge back. You're just like, oh, I'd be at the chiropractor right now. Get my back put back in place. You know, they can do crazy stuff. And so it makes it a lot of fun where you get those flashbacks of like, Oh, I, this is like back in the day when you're doing MMA training or you're throwing with the new white belts, you know, that they're getting good now. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was thinking about that recently. I was like, Hey, are we good? I, am I really doing people a disservice by like never exposing anyone <laughs> to, um, I, I mean, I'm for sure doing people a service by saving them from, because it's so, I can't save you from everything, but uh, that there's a certain piece of that experience that it just doesn't need to be there all the time. Like, yeah. every day. No. And, um, and there's a certain type of per customer that you and I both want that probably will not be there if, it, be if there. that's every day, right? Yeah, no, no. It's like we have a, we do that. That's twice a week during the week that we do that. And so it's not every day. So they, they enjoy it. And a lot of them don't roll with the young kids. I'm like, no, I don't have to. And then- you know, but then the young kids, the other days of the week, you know, they're, I have all my advanced MMA classes there because they're, they're just freaking. So what are they doing? Wrestling. They're basically coming in as guests in that other program with you is what they're doing or. What's that? So what, what are you doing twice a week? They're basically coming in as guests in that other program with you. No, no, no. We have the two classes that go on and then twice a week, we just all roll together. Oh, so you have like a special class where it's like a mix of. Yeah. It's, it's twice a week. Yeah. So it's like. So it's fun. the classes. Yeah, we have the classes is separate. So I teach D, James teaches Nogi, and then at the end, everybody just rolls together. So it's like you get the craziest matchups. It's pretty funny because I'll have like three D matches and a Nogi match and a D match. I'm like, shit. You know, I get a couple rounds of my son and his friends. You know, they're all like 22, 23 little killers. I'm like, thank God y'all weigh 150 pounds in your blue belts because this is not fun. <laughs> but it is fun in the same way because I get to remind them that dads can still beat them up. <laughs> So um, with all this going on, right? So you have different demographic. You have, you know, jujitsu can have all this. Oh yeah, these pieces to it. Um, so um, you, you talked about. I like the conversation about um, greeting, um, having somebody greet, just greet everybody, and it makes sense to me. Um, I, I don't have a dedicated person. We try to tell people to to greet everybody, yeah. but yeah, I can see that um, <clears throat> that like. It's a different, it's a change in mindset for me that like any, that like a small thing is a multiplier. So people think like they don't want to pay a little bit of money for a big multiplier. And for me, like I'll pay a lot of money for a small multiplier because I realize that like, uh, so you're like, oh, it's not much money. It's 850 bucks a month. People are like, I'm going to pay 850 bucks yeah. a month for some people to say hello and goodbye to people. I'm not going to do that. What that's yeah. going to do. It's like, well, if it increased uh, uh, retention by the smallest of amounts, smallest. You, you would five times your investment easy. Yeah. Think about this. Think about the guy, the, the of use of demographic stuff like after like my avatar is a 35 year old guy making good money owns all his house married two kids drives a bmw or mercedes you know that's what I, that's like my perfect avatar it's like you go through the parking lot the gym it's higher in cars because that's what i market to and then i have of course my mma program which is just kids that are just crazy but they're on their own island but think about this guy so we'll call him uh george George comes in hard day of work and he's like, Oh yeah, I can't wait to train. I'm going to train. He comes in he gets, you know, he just has a bad day. He's getting ragdolled. Right. And he's just like, man, now nah, I'm this, you know, this shit this is just not for me. And then he sits on the bench, you know, watching the matches. Nobody, nobody talks to him, you know, cause everybody's focused on training. You know, they're like, we're focused. We're in the zone. We're training. You know, everybody's on the mats laughing and giggling. He's just sitting in the bleachers like, man, maybe I don't belong. And then he's walks out the door and he's like, huh? yeah, maybe, you know, but you put the stop gap in there of somebody he's walked out the door has had a horrible experience or not horrible. It's a bad day, shitty day on the mats. We've all had it. And this person's like, Oh, bye. Have a great day. See you. See you next time. And you're like, Oh, thank you. You know, kind of just to me, it's like, if I can do those little things that might change somebody's attitude in 
you know, their feeling of belongingness, like we talked about retention is like, it's really hard because jujitsu, I use the word, the cultish thing, but you, you develop cults and clicks, even in your gym, I try to break them, but it's like, you know, you, you have these guys, they show up to train and they all end up in the corner and their little group. And then yeah. this has got the other group and these are the other guys and they got their own little groups. And it's like, all right. So I'll purposely like, all right, everybody switch, get a different partner, you know? So it's like you develop these little, and it's, it's good for the culture, but then for the new guy trying to break into that culture is tough because he's on the outside and he's not cool. And then it's like, I've had people in the past were like, well, I don't want to know anybody's name until they're a blue belt. I'm like, wow, you are going to have a really hard time with retention. It's like, you know, they don't know. it's like, you got to really focus on the little things, but yeah, doing that thing of having somebody there, you know, I've, from, what we, from what we've gotten so far from the test results of it, it's been great. What, um, do you have other little things other than that, that you've implemented? What other small little tweaks are you thinking about to make the experiences great for those sort of reasons? Yeah. A big one is making sure, and it goes back to like the successful gyms, man, make sure your bathroom is freaking immaculately clean because the guys don't care, but little Johnny's mom is like, ah, oh, I get tired. I, the bathroom, they're so disgusting. I didn't want to use the bathroom. It's like, clean your bathroom, make sure you, your gym looks like no one's trained in, you know, in the, cause our first class is usually kids classes, right? Make sure when those parents show up to class that that gym looks immaculate. There's everything's put where it belongs. Everything looks nice. It's the, it's the Walmart versus the Apple store mentality. You know, it's like, if your gym looks like a kid's toy section at Walmart versus the Apple store, the parents get a perceived value of like, Oh, this is why I pay more to go to this gym. Cause it, they take care of everything. Everything's nicer. Make sure the gym looks good. And what I do too is even before I had this front desk girl, I would, I used to do it more, but now I've done it less, but I would have uh, one of the moms, I'd be like, Hey, can you do me a favor? And I give them a clipboard and a pen. And I was like, could you walk through here and write down everything that's wrong with this gym from your vantage point? And I'd make it funny. I'm like, so I'm a dude, I'm a Viking barbarian jujitsu guy. I don't like, uh, and they'll, they'll, have, they'll laugh about it. And they'd give me this list. Like if you go to my gym, I don't, have you been to my gym? I don't know if you have yet. I, I think I have because there uh, there's events. Yeah, uh, yeah, the one for you've had close to it. So I believe I've been a couple of times. It's just funny because people will laugh. I have flowers in my gym. You know, like I have jujitsu, I have MMA fight, I have UFC guys. Like literally, the moms were like, you know, if you put f f uh, fake flowers by these windows, that would really make this look nice. And then in the bathroom, we've got like some flower things in there that moms did. And I'm like, I would never have thought that in a million years. So I'm like, flowers? Okay. And they're like, well, yeah, it just makes the place nicer. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So, you know, I, I definitely use women's opinions for the gym because, you know, us being guys, we're like, oh man, that mat looks good. Let's train. <laughs> it's like, we don't care. But, you know, and granted the other guys, the hardcore juice guys don't care either, but the, the average guy that's coming in, corporate America guy, making good money, you know, he wants something nice, you know, so always try working to improve your facility, always, you know, something a really good book. Um, what is it? The ice, ice cream maker. Yeah. It's a really good book. Ice cream maker about like if small things go wrong in your business. It leads to bigger problems. So like if something's broken, fix it. Like if you got a broken fan, get a new one. You know, it's like little things like that. Like people see broken things and it, it builds on to the business because then you start letting other things go. It's like the, in the book, how about the broken window um, theory it was like, if a business had a broken window and they didn't replace it, that within X amount of time, they'd go out of business. It's like, it's crazy. It's in the book. I should, I'll get you this. I'll show you the stats sometime. It was pretty nuts from the book, but it was a theory that they had called the broken window theory because like what, if someone's not willing to replace things, they're not really willing to run the business. I mean, that's a big example. We're going to fix the window because I don't want my shit getting stolen and I don't want a broken window either. But, um, you know, making sure that the gym is immaculate, the environment's good. And then the one thing I do still to this day, and yes, and it gets exhausting too, is I literally try to interact with every single person that I see that day. And that can be a lot because <laughs> it's like I'm up there, you know, if I got, if I got little ninjas, then I got kids class, then I got fundamental jujitsu, then I've got advanced jujitsu, and then I've got Muay Thai. That's five potential classes. You know, if there's 30 to 40 people in a class, that's 200 people. If you count parents, it might be 250. And what I mean by interact is like, as I walk through the gym, I'm like, hey, how's it going? How's it going? You know, like, and then if it's like the dads or the guys, you know, fist bump, like, hey, man, what's up? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? In class, if I'm teaching whatever, I talk to every single person in class, you know, it might be a long conversation, but it's like, you know, I try to give them small critiques on that technique, but then, you know, 
you know, fist bump or, Hey, what's up? How's your day? You know, into class, if I didn't get away around, it's like, try to interact with everybody I can, you know, and just, I want the vibe to be like, just so welcoming. I want people just love coming to the, the academy and training and making it their place, you know, cause I hear that people all the time. Like, like, man, this is the highlight of my day. Cause you know, work's hard, you know, marriage is hard. I just come here and I just train It's great. You know, everybody's so awesome. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, that's the culture I built. You know, that's, that's what I want. It's like, I don't want to have it where it's like, I don't like going to the gym. I've had it like that in the past. I and mean, it was like, you're just like getting burned out of the gym. Like, I don't like this place. You know, it's like, but to me, it's like, you know, I'll go up there today. It'll be the highlight of my day. So um, <clears throat> one of the other things you were, you were saying a little earlier was that um, a, a good retention strategy is one um, that I feel really good about. It makes it super feel good for me is like, Hey, um, like we were discussing it, like, Hey, give more value. And that's how we make more money. Right. And, but uh, you were talking a little bit about um, do that for retention, but then leverage it by making content about it, um, videoing it, put it on social media, put it everywhere and uh, repurpose it. Uh, so basically try to capture the value and use that for marketing. So it's retention and the value and that that it serves its purpose on its own, but then re-leverage that for marketing. So some of the things you were talking about is like, is it hard to video and capture somebody saying, um, good morning, uh, hey, have a good day, good night. <laughs> like, is that like, what, what can we capture? What can we do to make stuff awesome that we can capture and make content out of? Man, that one I wouldn't, worry so much about that one, but the one that's working really good for us and we mess around with is I'll just ask like random students, I'll like, hey, can I make a quick video of you? And, and they love it. And I'm like, I had this one guy, he's like 64. And I'm like, you know, hey, what do you love about the gym? He's like, oh, I love training. Everybody's so nice to me. I'm like, what would you tell somebody who says they're too old to train? He's like, I'm 64 years old. And I'm like, yeah, we get a lot of guys like in their 30s that think they're too old to train. He's like, no, man, come train, you know. And it was a 45 second video, whatever. It went crazy on social media, you know, organically. So it's like, um, if you haven't read uh, Gary Vee's new book, Day Trading Attention, just finished that one. I was expecting like, I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, how you, you know when you think you're going to get like some cool hack, like back in the day, like, oh yeah, if I did this, I could do this. And then like, I read Gary Vee's new book and he's like, make content about your business. And if it does good organically, turn it into an ad. And I was like, wait, where's, where, where's the fancy stuff? And it's like, there's nothing fancy. He's like, he goes, just do good, cool shit, post it. And if it does well, turn it into an ad because people always get so like, well, I need this campaign and yada, yada, yada. And Hormozy style, even Hormozy switched his, his status now of being, he's gone to become a branding guy. He's like, yeah, cause he was used to make fun of branding. And now he's like, no, actually you need to have a brand. You need to build your brand. So my brand is what I do. And it's super cheap. I'll give you guys a couple of hacks here. Is like one I have, I have a picture of like my mats just looking super, like my mats are super cool. Like I had them uh, custom made to look like the IBJF tournament. So it's like people like as a, as a mental thing for guys that way they get, I'm like, Oh, this will help you out when you compete. Cause then you're used to competing on the squares and the colors and everything like that. It's like my math look like that. So one day I took it and the gym just looked super good. Like the floor was shiny. Everything looked super nice. I took a picture and I made it bad. I made a post first. It was like, you know, uh, at, at peak, uh, peak MMA and Keller, we pride ourselves on having the cleanest gym in town and hell prop and heck probably the world. And then people are laughing like, Oh, that's funny. Cleanest gym in the world. Blah, blah. And I did really well. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to run that as an ad and it's still, I've been running it for like, I just run it as an awareness ad. I've been running it for probably almost two years now. And it's like, it's it just, it literally still gets comments and interactions, but also to them, my competitors are like, why is this guy running? Like my competitors probably shake their head at the stuff I do. Cause I always, I'm big into testing stuff like Gary B said. So I did that. So the other day I was just like, huh, I was like running out of ideas for content. Cause it's like, what am I going to do? Film somebody doing a go, go plot and then try to explain what it is. It's like, so you run out of stuff to talk about or a testimonial. And like I talked earlier, I talked about, I had a fan break. And so I had to buy a new fan and I was like, man, those new blades are pretty cool. They changed them because you from your engineering background, you understand more of me, but they changed the blades were a different shape. They're almost like almost more square than like a blade than like the regular fan blades. And it pushes a ton more air. And I'm like, that's so cool. So I tried a video and I was like, I was like, we got this new super fan. It's so great. The Texas summers, you know, everybody come train. We're ready to go. We got a new fan made a post. It got a ton of engagement. So I was like, all right, make it an ad. So I literally ran an ad for like two weeks of a fan. 
are you getting still I, I know awareness ad but are you yeah. getting students from ads like this that's the most the big question the one i get the most comments on is the the clean mats one mm -hmm. I, and what's funny too is i get and it's funny i don't know if i'm being it's hard you know it's hard you know how hard it is to track stuff when you're doing a bunch of stuff it's it used to be easier now it's a nightmare so if I have so many different things going on, but I'm always trying to layer on stuff kind of the, with the Gary Vee model of just like stacking things. And it's so cheap. You know, I can do it for two bucks a day and reach, you know, 500 to 700 people. I mean, that's insane reach. Um, but I'll test different ones like that. And, but the one that is funny is when, to me, it's, it's kind of like, it sort of reminds the students of like how important that cleaning the gym is, things like that. Cause a lot of people talk about that. Like, oh yeah, I saw that post about the gym being clean and thank God it is clean. And I'm like, oh yeah, they're like, oh yeah, I trained this other gym and it was just nasty. And I'm like, yeah, no, we pride ourselves every day before the first class, the entire gym is cleaned. So it's like, you know, that's one of the things we pride. And, uh, you know, by students seeing that and knowing when they come to the gym that, you know, we cleaned everything that day before they trained. It's like, that's kind of like, oh, nice. This place is, this place is legit and it smells better too. Yeah. So that's, um, I guess that's like almost pre-framing a cell is how you're using it. Yes, I do a ton of pre-framing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, yeah, you're, you're exactly right because I'm assuming your daily spend on ads that are given that are for leads is much more than $2. Oh God, right? yeah. If it costs us, if yeah. I have a killer campaign, I might be able to get $8 leads, but you know, on average it's probably 15 bucks. And then everybody that's running Facebook ads knows that 50% of the leads are garbage because people are like, oh, you know, it's like the old saying, if you go back to the digital, and you might have the numbers better than me. It's like 20% of opt-ins are like, yeah, I'm interested. 30% are like, oh, I'm interested maybe later. And 50% are like, oh man, I was drunk. I don't know why I filled that thing out. I might, might come in in five years. Mm -hmm. You know, is that kind of close to your numbers? We, we try to get them with like, I have really long automation series now, but yeah, I mean, I still... I can do a little bit better than those numbers. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe I have it pushed back to only like 30% or 40% are for the far future. But yeah, yeah, some of them will be like, we will get them on the phone or, or immediately. And it's like, oh no, I'm no longer interested. It's yeah. like, bro, it has been 27 <laughs> seconds. That's what I'm talking about. Cause you're, you're, you're a marketing ninja. You understand this more than most people is like, we can get leads all day long and like, but the thing is people are like, Oh, Facebook doesn't work or Google doesn't work. Or you, it's like, a numbers game. It's a numbers I mean, game. It, it's Facebook doesn't work as well as the organic SEO leads. No, it's just, organics, I'm going to run out of those. Right. So yeah. you're going to run out of the people that are searching for BJJ in your area or whatever terms you want. There's some other terms you can go for. <laughs> but, uh, you're you're, you're going to run out. So instead you go for the you cast the wider net and, and you cash, catch catch. Um, uh, what's the name of the fish that nobody wants? The hardheads or whatever. <laughs> oh, carp. Yeah, so uh, the yeah. salt weather fish and everybody goes yeah. back like another stupid one of it. Like so, we cast a wider a wider net and we capture some fish that is like you and it stings you. The one <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like get out of here. Um, but that's a good one you brought up though. People need to remember. It, and I didn't think about that the way you said it. That's a good way I'm gonna explain to people. It's like it's casting net, and unfortunately, the bigger the net gets, the more carp get in there. And it's like, like Brian said, you can literally be like, you could really get somebody that just filled something out, and they're like, oh no, I'm not interested anymore. It's like people are just weird, but you know, bro, that get, was that was 20 seconds ago <laughs> that I wanted that. Their attention span is like, I saw a different ad for Pilates, and I'm gonna go do that. Yeah, go I've ahead. already scrolled, and yeah, that'll be bad, baby. I'll be like, hey, I'll take it as self responsibility. I should have responded faster while you were still <laughs> on the thing because at, at 27 seconds, you have time to opt in and go back to Facebook, and every five fifth post is an ad, and you are a serial ad clicker. You've already opted into something else you like better, and you're on the phone with them. They got you first. My bad. Um, <laughs> the goldfish retention, a goldfish attention span. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's wild. Yeah, constantly I'm looking for different. Uh, we're we're working on. I'm not going to say it on a recorded call, but I'm working on some special red belt stuff that I'm testing for nice. that. And I, I've I've tested it. It's not in um, everybody's software, but it, we are getting some results. 
where it's changing those percentages a little bit with that, that'll be announced soon. But like, I'm always trying to push into those numbers a little bit um, because as, as Facebook gets more and more competitive, what's the old saying? You're like, it's he who can afford to sp spend the most, the most. For, for the lead that wins. Well, yeah. they said to acquire a customer, but yeah. I say, say that you can say it for the lead. Awesome. And that's a hard thing in our industry for a lot of people to accept is they're like, well, you know, I don't want to spend money on ads because I, I have a great gym and I, and I teach great. Amy's fun. Amy's really good about it. She calls it like the, if you're signed up like under 10 students a month, they're coming from search trap. They're organic. They're, they, they're looking for you. It's like, you know, getting 10 signups a month, you should, you can do easily. And you also don't know if your sales work. So my thing yeah. is you don't know if your processes work, if that's the only yeah. thing you can keep. If you <laughs> only take referrals, right? Yeah. A plus sign up, A plus leads. Yeah, well, then it's like, awesome. oh, yeah, I'm good at sales. I'm good at point like, no, setting. No. Yeah, well, th this is like when I signed up for gyms, the, the, nobody even answered the phone or had a website. I yeah. just had to get in there. It was a referral. It's whatever. And it's like yeah. they didn't Let miss me, me and they, they, didn't, they didn't have any process whatsoever. So uh, is that the only leads you want? And that's why you're suffering because there ain't very many of those people. Um, it's so yeah. if you want a normal human, you got to meet a certain minimum that most martial arts gems don't meet. If you want even more, then you have you have to be excellent, uh, oh, yeah. and you have to be the Chick Fil A or the what uh, of the service. So you're going to get people. There's so many people that I say that that they don't like. Oh, I don't eat fast food, but they'll go buy Chick Fil A. Yeah, that's not fast food. They think it's fat. It, it's fast. Food. Dude, and the price of Chick Fil A now is getting to the point where it almost is like dining out. <laughs> well, they're fast food, but they're they're uh, priced. They're pricing themselves as the, at the low end of like actual actual sit down restaurant. restaurants. Only you don't have to sit down. Hundred percent, a hundred percent, and and people will still pay it because it's like because they they don't want to have a negative experience. They want yep. the quality to be higher. And um, oh, dude. Yeah, a Chick Fil A sandwich versus a McDonald's sandwich, night and day. I mean, it's like I eat, I eat both. You know, unfortunately, sometimes you're in a situation hurry, and my kids want McDonald's. It's like, oh god, this is gonna take me two days to burn off. You know, or Chick Fil A, you eat it, and you're like, huh, that was a pretty good sandwich. That's, that's pretty. You know, it looked like real chicken. <laughs> so, it, it pretended to be at least. Maybe yeah, it was. It Who be. knows? But it's also like the experience of employees, and it's like. Yeah. How do you, I get with the owners there, but like, obviously it's a franchise. Obviously the owner's not there. And yeah, obviously the owners of all the other places would also like to give good customer service. So how the heck did they give so much better customer service than everyone else? I don't know the answer. I know there's whole seminars about the answer, yeah. but. Yeah. I think it's just really training their staff and setting high standards, you know, and that's what we have to do as gym owners too, is set higher standards. You know, it's like, cause it, the, we're not going to get less competitive. There's not going to be less gyms opening up in your area. There's not going to be, it's, you have to keep raising the bar. It's like, no, the bar is raising whether you raise it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you're like, well, I used to do good. My gym used to make money. Now I don't know what happened. I'm like, well, you don't market and your sales aren't that great. One, there's more people in our industry that it's going to be perpetually opening up. Two, there's other industries that are directly going to compete with us. Our same person is could go several different places. And there's more of that. I mean, there's more crunch fitness. There's more, and they've got classes yeah, inside. There. There's more of this, that. Um, I love kickboxing, whatever. Oh, that's not a yeah. competitor to us. It's like, well, it could be. It could be. It could be. Um, just like competitors for your kids program could be gymnastics and dance and baseball um, because they're not necessarily going to do both. Um, so, uh all everything's getting more competitive. It's getting more saturated, um, <clears throat> and the standard more more businesses are knowing what the heck they're doing. More of them are, are attending marketing. They're learning. They're having tools. They're using automation, and um, huge. You, that stuff used to be just because you dip your toe in it, you were at like the top of the. And now it's like that's part of the minimum. So that yeah. it, it is changing. Um, the dude that uh, kicks people in the face in their garage is no longer your top competitor in many <laughs> cities. Uh, used to be. Used to be, yeah. Garage jujitsu used to be a thing. Yeah, well, it used to be your your top dude, like of that of the numbers. Like, yeah, he's really great. It's awesome over there. It's what, like, okay, cool. Well, but now you have multiple places, or it's like, oh, the karate school with the jujitsu program. Well, now you have those, and there are kids programs and whatever, and then you have. 
all these BJJ black belts, whether they're good or not, customers are everywhere don't care. Um, yeah. And you know, you have all you have many of these, right? Because uh, product to BJJ going on is these people are coming out, and um, so there's many more school owners. There's many uh, more um, potential solutions. Yeah, it's uh, great as so if your solution grow. sucks, there's no problem. <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah, because you know I used to you know dream of the problems we have now. It's some, it's, I read that quote somewhere. So I was like, the problems you have now were the dreams you had in the past. You know, it's like the, you know if you had told me that I could make ten thousand dollars a month with my first gym, I'd have been like, yeah, you're lying. It's like I cannot. You know, it's like what? And now it's like if we made ten thousand. I'm I'm having to lay people off. And <laughs> I can't pay my bills because my bills are a lot higher than that. You know, but it. It, every level had we, was it new levels, new problems. It's like, you know, having a hundred students, then getting to 150, then getting to two, then go three, four. Every step you go costs more money, time, and effort. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's finding that sweet spot. And it's part of like my gray beardness is I quit, you know, at one time I had four gyms. Then I've tried, you know, having the mega gym. My gym at one point was like, I want to say it was just under 11,000 square feet. It was ridiculous. I was like, they had three different rooms. Like you could literally be having a party in one of them. I wouldn't know what the hell's happening because I'm in the other room over there inside the building. You know, and I was like, and they start getting stressed out. And that's why I kind of mentioned earlier when it's like, when I knew I was going where I didn't want to go, I was like, I don't want to be here. It's like, I, I didn't I mean, and I did a lot of things wrong. I designed it wrong. I could have done a lot better job, you know, but when the gym got that big and my payroll got that big and the stress got that big, people don't realize when you're running a big gym, if you don't like people quitting, at a regular size gym, when you're running a mega gym and say you got 400 members and you got a badass 5% retention rate, which is, you know, better than 90% of people I talk to, that's guaranteed 20 people canceling a month, you know, with this guaranteed or more. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to maintain a 5% uh, churn rate at that size. Oh, but at that size. Even a smaller size. At that yeah. size, usually you're looking at 8 to 12% churn yeah. rate, which means you're looking at 40 or so. Yeah. yeah. A month. Yeah. People are like, oh, I want that many students. I'm like, well, have you done? You know, you well, you have to be prepared students. to sign up 40 students to maintain. Yeah. Just to maintain. Uh, it's, uh, it's all like, those big, all those big gyms are signing up. Almost all yeah. are signing up that many students every you month. You have to. Yeah. So I had a point in my life and I was like, I was like, man, I don't, you know, what's the answer? It's like, I want to be able to, I'll miss traveling and going and doing stuff. I'm working all the time. And I was like, I, I slowly started downsizing like my weirdo account. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to keep this piece and then this piece. And then now I've got the gym, like right where I love it again. It's like, it, you know, I, it's just runs smooth, consistent. You know, I don't have to stress about it. You know, the numbers are easier to deal with, which makes it easier to be profitable. Cause like Brian said, I don't have to sign up as many as I did in the past, you know, yeah, there are some months where we'll get uh, 40 sign up month. And it's like, oh, that was great. You know, that's literally going to the bottom line. It's like, not like it was in the past where it's like, I had to hit that number just to, just to keep, imp just to keep at the level I was at. So, you know, you get to different points of the game where I'm at now, because I'm 49. And I'm kind of like, I kind of like a little less stress. And I just want to chill a little bit and go off to Thailand for two weeks and train and sit on the beach and drink coconuts. <laughs> but, you know, having it the gym where I have it now it is, I really like it. Amy calls it a lifestyle gym because, you know, have it dialed in where I can do my things that I want to do and then build off that. Now it throws a monkey wrench into it. Now as my son is training a lot and he wants to be a fighter now. So now that's, I'm like, oh my God, now you suck me back into more time and more hours and more training and, and stuff. But it's, it's him and it's fun and I'll do anything for him. So, you know, he's got me working more than I want to work right now, but it's worth it. You know, it's an investment in him and his future. So, but if he wasn't fighting, yeah, my gym would just be like super smooth and nothing, you know, no MMA worries. But now, you know, because my focus is jujitsu. I love jujitsu. You know, it's like I have kickboxing, I have MMA. Those guys are great. But man, at the end of the day, I'm a jujitsu guy. It's like I've done everything and I love jujitsu. <laughs> That's my baby. It's what, you know, I look so forward to it. Like my favorite, you know, I set my schedule up around my life. That's one thing we can do. A lot of times guys, like, oh, I can't do that because the students will get bad. It's like, man, set your schedule up around your life after you're established. Like, my, I live for my Saturday morning class. I wanted a class that didn't interfere with family stuff, everything like that. I wanted to be able to just go in, train super early, not super early, but 9 a.m., boom, get after it, go, have fun, train hard, and do, you know, it's, it's like, it's as close as the old school as we can get. It's like a short warm up, and then we just do rounds for a little over an hour. And it's just so much fun. It's my, the best class of the week. And I designed it that way. Yeah, I mean, I personally, <clears throat> 
wouldn't uh I have a couple of uh really long time students and staff members that work for me that are interested in MMA and are still trying to do something. And that's really the only reason I have any personal focus in the MMA program at my gym. Otherwise I'd be like, those guys could handle it or or, or, or I wouldn't <laughs> even care. Like, hey, you want to come like I like that all disciplines are at my gym. I like yeah. the kickboxing and jiu-jitsu and you could be well rounded there. As far as catering to people that want to be in the freaking UFC, I do not care. Um hmm. That that does not make me happy. The feel no. good emotions are no longer connected to that at all. <laughs> whatever whatever good good chemical my brain produces, it doesn't produce it when that when we sign up that guy or when you no. talk to that guy. <laughs> my brain no, produces the other chemicals when that guy says he wants to fight in the UFC. When you were younger, I was the same way. I was like, oh man, that's I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be great. And then you're like, oh, uh, now nah, people say it, and I'm just like, oh god, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, your your brain also makes the bad chemical. <laughs> yeah. That. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm also over that. I'm I'm about improving people's lives and doing yeah. martial arts, and we can do a little bit of competing. Yeah. Uh, mainly, we compete in jujitsu. We can we we still fight in MMA and stuff like that. But like, and a certain type of dude that's a martial artist and wants to fight in MMA doesn't bother me. The yeah. typical MMA fighter is kind of icky. In, in general, in, in all ways, with our other training partners, with with everything. And yeah. um, that dude, I don't enjoy a whole lot. But. Yeah, we've had to weed a couple of those out. And don't be afraid to do that, too. If they get somebody that's just not a fit for the gym, it's like, it's like, hey, bro, this might not be the gym for you. It's like, you know, and I just blame it on it. I'm like, man, we're an older gym, you know. It's like, because you just don't, you just, they know sometimes people just don't fit. And you're like, man, you might want to try another gym. Yeah, you're going to lose revenue, but you're going to lose more revenue from them hurting people. Yep. Or running people out, even without the office because they're a dick. Yeah, I mean, it's um, your gym. The mat is kind of going to have a certain vibe. And if you let people change it, it <clears throat> it don't actually take that many people to change a vibe of a huge mat. No, and, it doesn't. Uh, if, if you let them do whatever. So, yeah, that's something I've been try to be careful about and uh i care about that a lot and that's one of the reasons that i kind of just okay cool we separate the beginner program we do it this way really like the vibe it's super valuable i do i do miss that like you know our our guys at lamar like even though the jujitsu might even been a lot less sophisticated our begin our white belts had like Boy, they were self defense ready fast. Like they were like <laughs> and they, had, they, they were really tight. It was very us against them, and like they were down for the team. And like I liked a lot of that, and I miss it. But it's like I don't miss the oh, icky and toxicness. Like I don't, I don't <laughs> like. I would like the good without the bad. I'm not willing to take the bad again to get the good. Yeah. Sure, would like to cheat and get the good without the bad. Exactly. Uh, but. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much what we had planned for the day. Do you have any closing um, comments or advice for gym owners? Yeah, you know, I I, I joke around with people. You know, it's it's a stressful job. It's like you know we we left a nine to five to work a twenty four seven. You know, it's like I, I never turn on. Like it's the hardest thing is to turn our brains off from like trying to improve the gym or improve our jujitsu. You know, it's like so you don't. Know, make it the best thing you can but at the end of the day you got to remember that like we have the best job on earth it's like it's like when i was in corporate america and just grinding away and trying to you know get my number move up so i could get a chance of getting a promotion and a five percent raise is like you know busting my ass you know and i dreamed of having a gym someday and then i had the gym then i'll run people and they'll be bitching about something i'm like well yeah if you don't like it you can go get a job and they're like oh i don't want a job I'm like exactly and then fuck it you know you have a great thing. And as you get, I think it's as you get older, you, you kind of develop, like you said earlier, it's like, I want the gym to be a place that helps people. It's like, uh, yeah, I've been there, done that. I've, I've fought MMA. I've trained MMA guys. I've done jujitsu. I've done kick. I've done everything I could possibly do and competed in a bunch of different stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like helping people is way more rewarding. You know, it's like winning is cool and it's fun. And, and but like getting to impact people and, you know, just, you know, things get tough when you're in the gym, but just remember, it's like, it's the best job, best job on earth. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, I, I can go like today. It's like, you know, I did some stuff I did this morning, train, eat lunch with my wife, hang out with the kids, you know, do what I want to do. And then it's like, okay, then I got to jump on this grind. And then I got to take my daughter to therapy. And then it's like, okay, cool. Now I'm going to go. Then it's like my time, grab a quick snack. And then I'm going to go teach and I'm going to go choke people. And 
sign some people up and, you know, or at least see how many people we signed up and, you know, check on our numbers and just, man, it's a great life. You know, you, and you can make whatever you want. You can make, you know, I think you said it earlier about the toxic stuff. If you have stuff in your gym, get rid of it, get rid of the annoying things that annoy you. And then like, just make your, your gym a great place. And it's going to grow too, because people are going to be happier to be there. They're going to stay longer and they're going to bring more friends. Exactly. So if, uh, if people want more, they want to follow you more, learn more about you, where, where should they go? Uh, I'm on Instagram more, uh, Paul period, homie, uh, in, on IG. I also have them on Facebook too. And then, yeah, any of those are great. Um, yeah, those, I like Instagram better though. It's less Facebook's just gotten to be ah, <laughs> so much drama. I have to unfollow so many people. <laughs> All right. It has been great. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Great. Thanks.